Hello, so in this video I want to do two things. Is one I want to set up a basic um, turn to face and walking mechanism system and the other one is to fix a bug and then to make you aware of another bug which I've partly fixed but haven't fully fixed and unfortunately I just don't have the time today. Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays are my worst days for programming. I don't have much time for it on those days. So I'll just show you the bugs first and to illustrate that let's look at the building bug. Let's create a whole bunch of guys. Right? Let's get rid of that building. Now. So we've got all these guys moving around. Now, if you make someone move somewhere and then straight away instantiate a building. So I'm going to move them there and then click. Look they go totally insane and they're going to move to the center of the building and then once they're in there okay, there's some people, they're not all in there but there are some in there and I'll show you sneakily in that building, yes see so the fix for that is really quite easy and I'll show you what to do open up the building placement script I've got mine on the other monitor so I'm just checking to see if I'm saying everything correctly Right, okay, no, you also need to open up the unit manager script. And what I'm going to do in the unit manager script is create a public bool called build mode. Now we've done that. And now we want to open up the build button script. And here, where we've done all of this and we've got a building, down in this one there, we want to say. Um, unit manager dot instance dot build mode equals true okay not done yet now when we're here we're so sorry now we're in the building placement script and we're going down here current building is not null we're not rotating the building we don't care about that we're here so we've pressed the left button we haven't hit anything and we're not hovering over um, any UI elements so now we basically this is when we instantiate the building so now I believe it is safe it is safe to uh, turn build mode off we're not finished yet what we have to do now I think is go into the unit script and yeah we do need to do that so now we'll go into the unit script and where this all happens so we've hit the right mouse button and we're not hovering over any sort of UI element and unit manager dot instance dot build mode equals equals false now here's a quick note, if you've never seen this kind of script before, this is called the singleton pattern. If you've never seen this before, you can see how useful it is. Basically what I've done is I've used this across three different scripts and in none of those scripts do I have to do any kind of initialization or call the script or anything like that. I can use it anywhere I want and this is a very powerful thing, a, a powerful feature of C Sharp but just never use this if you're going to have multiple scripts. The unit manager script will there only ever be one of those in any scene. And this isn't complete. What I should do is check, like when I start um, loading more scenes and stuff, I'll check to see if a unit manager is there and destroy it if it is. I think that's what you're supposed to do. But we'll fall off that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, this should work now. And that crazy behavior that happened before should stop. So let's have a look. I might just adjust the camera a bit so we can see more of what's going on. Okay. So now, they're all moving around. I've got this tower. Haha, -ha, I'm going to make you move to the center. Of th and they do. Oh, why did that happen? Have I not... Have I been totally silly? Okay, yeah, it would help a lot if I built the scripts. Now it's working, right. So now you see I've got a building and I'm right clicking everywhere, but it's not going to move until now. 
So what that means, if you've got all these guys moving, and I want to, and I can't do this thing where I quickly, oh, that's annoying. I'm not sure when I, okay, yeah. So anyway, that fixes that bug. Right, the other bug, let's get rid of all of these guys. Just have one dude. Now let's also go into the unit script and make the speed much slower, so I can illustrate this point. And let's zoom in a bit with the camera. <laughs> oh, hello. What the hell? Ah, uh, whoops. Had the wrong thing selected. Okay. Turn gizmos on. Now what happens here is that if you click if you click right next to the unit is it on his node or it's like if you click really close to him then there's this it's not a game breaking thing because all that happens is that you click on him and it goes oh something's wrong but nothing breaks and the frame rate doesn't drop. I mean, obviously, I have to. Well, I have to fix it. The frame rate does drop. I have to fix it. Uh, I just don't have time at the moment. I'm still making aware that that is a bug and it is something that I'll be working on fixing as soon as I possibly can. Okay, that's bug stuff out of the way. Um, now, what I want to do is implement some kind of movement. So to do that, go into models and create an animator. Well, I find it really hard to teach and do stuff at the same time. Animator controller, go to window and animator, slide that over there, here we go. Now go into the guy, go into animations, click idle, go loop time and loop pose. I'm not sure if the second one's necessary but I just click it anyway. The first one definitely is, and loop pose. I did that for walk and for idle. Now, go into this character, drag idle first, and then drag walk. Now what we're going to do is create a transition from idle to walk, and then from walk to idle. Click on the first transition, uncheck has exit time, we've got to create a parameter. Click here in parameters, uh, float, we'll call it walk speed. I'm not doing running and crouching and sneaking and all that kind of stuff just yet. That will come though. And we're going to say that if walk speed is greater than zero, let's say greater than one. If walk speed is greater than one, well, we want to go from idle to walk. Then go into the next transition, uncheck that, and go into walk speed is less than 0.1. Point 0.1. Point 0.14 would work too. So that's that out of the way. Now we need to go into the hierarchy view again. Click on man. Let's make that smaller. And then we'll drag this. Oh, let's call it something better too. We'll call it uh, unit move. Click on man. And drag this unit move animator into the animator controller there. Go away. Okay, um, now let's go in back into the unit script again. We have to create a public animator, called animator. That's referencing the animator called controller we just made. We also need to do a private, private, private int walk speed ID and that's it now we go down to that's move states uh, on path found find closest follow path 
This script is quite messy. It's all going to be cleaned up with time. I'm sort of like prioritizing releasing functional videos over having perfect code. Okay, we'll just fix bugs together. This part here is when the path is reached. So I'm going to say, which is good, because when we can find the end of the path, we can do all sorts of interesting things in terms of interactions and that sort of thing. And this is where the path ends. So we'll do animator set float to, uh, so we're going to set the walk speed ID. Oh, there's something I missed. Okay, I'll, go, I'll do that now. Do that. Um, copy that, and then down here. We'll set that to 3, or whatever number you want, as long as it's greater than 1. It could be a 1,000, it really doesn't matter. Okay, now something else that I missed. In start, what you want to do is initialize that um, integer we made before, this one here, like this. Walk speed id equals animator dot string to hash walk speed now what that's doing is it's going to the animator and finding out that parameter based on the name and then converting that to an integer uh, because that's or oh, I suppose a hash that's an integer really um, because that's much faster than looking up strings as you know from my coding practice I use strings all the time but that's not the best way to go it's much faster to compare integers than it is to compare strings and this is what that does it takes this name and turns it to an integer which is um, faster okay that should actually work now you've done this you created those two variables you've um, initialized it you've taken the, the name in the animator and turned it to an integer you've gone down into the follow path and then where the path ends here when target index is greater than or equal to path.length you've made it set to zero which will set it to idle when you're not in that while you're still moving around you've set it to three now while we're here let's do something else let's go transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation current waypoint minus transform dot rotation something's wrong ah transform dot position Okay, so what that's doing is it's going to turn the unit to face the current waypoint, which we need, because at the moment he's sort of walking like a crab. Okay, so let's save that, and now it should be working fine. Oh, I don't know why it does. Every single time I right-click on the scene, it um, brings up that. Not every time, but when I start. Okay, so it's not moving at all. And that makes me sad. Ah, of course, okay, right. So here we go. Let's go into start again. And we're going to say animator equals this dot get component animator. Okay, now it should work. Hey, see, he's looking in the right direction, and he's walking, and let's speed that up again, because we don't need to look at that, that tedious bug anymore. Go into float speed, and let's change that to 5. He's walking along. Now, if you find this movement kind of disconcerting, it's very angular. Sebastian Lake has made uh, two tutorials on uh, path smoothing, so this will look a lot more natural. I haven't even looked at those tutorials yet, not because I'm not interested, but because I want to keep this movement sort of angular and predictable while I'm still working on the basic systems of the game. If you can't deal with that and you think it looks so horrible, then definitely check out his videos and update this project to have path smoothing. 
I'm going to keep it like this for a while until I'm, you know, much happier with the basic mechanics of this game. Okay, guys. So just to recap, we got the guy moving around and looking at things. We've changed it so we cannot um, right-click to move a unit while a building is being inst instantiated. And then as soon as oh, it's that again, and as soon as it has been instantiated, we can move around again. That fixes that bug. And finally, there is a bug that is now at the moment not fixed yet. And uh, that's that one. Okay, and I will fix that as soon as I get the time. Okay, thanks a lot for watching.